Okay, so um, I think we're ready. We're going to move on to the second presentation. Um, Florence Fontas. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the title is Genomic uh, Model State to Humanities Limits, a Philosophical Study of Japanese Animations uh, Cinematography. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, and for the ENOJP for uh, inviting me here. It's a real honor, however stressful it is. Uh, so I will, in this presentation, after a quick introduction, I will be talking about the theory of Japanese animation and how to study it and why we should study it in a philosophical point of view. And then I will go on to the Watsuji's, uh, Watsuji Tetsuro's Aidagara principle and how this phenomenon, this concept, is represented in Japanese animation and specifically this uh, series called Kino no Tabi. So, I will be using one of the reasons I'm favoring the study of Aidagara is stemming from a personal interest uh, in regards to philo uh, Japanese philosophical political thought uh, as a research subject, as I am a PhD student. Uh, what this principle of Aidagara allows for a comprehensive expression of the essentiality of human relationships with themselves and with other conceptualizations in accordance to the practice of political activities and the understanding of the subsequent philosophical inquiries, uh, human relationships are essential to the construction of an effective and healthy authoritative power as provided by political structures, in theory. Meaning, I will each time express an application to this comparative analysis in accordance to my own interest in political philosophy. One of the most interesting points of the animate, animated medium is that it allows to a combination of graphical movement, the video imagery, uh, the written commitment of the scenario, which sometimes comes from books, which sometimes is original or from other written and, and drawn uh, medium like mangas, and uh, the musical accompaniment, the soundtrack. For this presentation, I will not go into much details for the last one, but please do not mistake it as a disinterest in the, in, in the musical subject. Uh, the musical imaginaire is as important as the pictorial or literal ones. I am just mindful of the time frame given to this panel. Uh, I will present a brief summary of Kino no Tabi so no one is lost while I'm talking. Uh, so it is an episodic story built, which builds itself on a one or more little stories per episode where the spectator follows the peregrination of a young girl named Kino who is a self-proclaimed traveler. I will go for into further details about this last thing uh, later in the presentation. Each story has the same structure. Kino, the main character, will travel through, through diatopic lands uh, with the help of the unconventional talking motorcycle named Hermes. Uh, she each time will arrive at the border of a specific city named country, she used the term Kuni to describe these cities, uh, and she was there for three days to learn more about the history and uh, traditions of these specific uh, countries only to leave and then set her journey on another country by uh, once again traveling through vast lands in a seemingly infinite cycle, an odyssey of sorts, without the tangible uh, aim of a final destination. Uh, the study of Japanese animation allows me to raise the question relating to the graphical manifestation of philosophical phenomena. How is philosophy portrayed? Are there semiological codes, or is it a more complicated, subjective, branching system? More precisely, in the case of, of this present study, how does the writer and then the animators uh, express the concept of Aidagara? <coughs> Sorry. This uh, Aidagara, as in in-betweenness, or as I understand it through my studies, uh, this manifestation of interdependency of ethical human beings. Furthermore, by which mechanism do the animators render what is essentially an unseen but universally understood agreement on interdependent human relationships? Um, so, I will set something straight first. According to an interview done in 2017, the original writer of the novel Kino no Tabi, Shigusawa Keiichi, said he wasn't particularly attached to the, to the philosophical potential of his own creation 
due to which I will bring a, um, a theory of consumer appropriation, uh, thus making pertinent the application of what philosophy, uh, French philosophy professor Jean-Jacques Lunenberger called Théorie de l'Imaginaire, a theory of imaginaries. Uh, I will quote him and translate as I'm quoting. So, quote, imaginaire is inseparable from invention, which produces, maintains, and renews the image from the in imagination. It constitutes its own faculty on an intentionality specific to the mind, the consciousness, which through the images gives itself a thought contents that differs from the concrete perception or the abstract thought. End of quotation. Uh, he also adds to, to this definition a particular def des designation I quite like from another French semiologist named uh, Gilbert Durand, uh, which is the, quote, transcendental fantastic, unquote. Uh, animation as a material has much, as much potential of applying either gala logic as the content of the animation itself. So we have to think about the product and the content of the product as different parts of the animation. Uh, this theorization could also be implemented as a concept of Aidagara, where the cultural pro popular production can act as a mean to link oneself as an author, a uh, creating entity, to, in this case, a spectator, a uh, self that gains something from consuming the product itself. Uh, although what is gained in the way of, of consumption is subjective, Indivi uh, it's an individual act of the Ningen. It will always differ from person to person, individual to individual. <clears throat> but there must always be a gain, and the worth is only defined by the receptacle and not always by the creator of the product. Thus, animation as a, product, uh, a cultural product can invoke one or multiple links existing in the Aidagara spatio-temporal co-creation whether the author recognized the possibilities or not. The theory of dual identity, uh, this dual identity, can consequently be applicable for all products of culture, where the creation belongs and does not belong to the creator from the moment it is consumed uh, by a foreign self, introducing a paradox of possession. The idea itself from which the creator is stemming build itself from the creator's imagination, uh, thus being a product that's part uh, experience of self and the more intangible notion of creativity. Uh, for example, I will set uh, an example right now to, to explain in more details. When Kino travels through a country, the, the main character travels through a country the, where the life or death of the citizen is decided through a vote by the government, uh, it is because the writer himself, for the writer himself, the death of a citizen by the authority of a political power is not a foreign ID. This is uh, the imagination through experience. <clears throat> Another way, by depicting another country where she travels and where this same death becomes a tool wielded by the government to ensure the citizenship in a grotesque charade uh, of authority, there, the writer will use a, the creative, creative or dreamlike, as Wunenberger would call it, a part of imagination. It is the creative animation, uh, imagination and not the experience one. Um, <coughs> Kino Notabi seeks to transcend each, uh, <coughs> sorry, seeks to transcend each experience from the author into being a dystopic painting of life to which the spectator can relate, not relate by experience. Uh, but by some kind of branching morbid curiosity. This is what I consider one of the pathways the Aidagara theory can take, by creating an empathic bridge between the ID, the creator, the product, and the consumer or spectator. I will use the term, more the term consumer in the case of animation. Uh, considering the animated medium, uh, the Aidagara principle must also take into account the disparity between the character, fictional character one might identify, identify oneself with, or is forced to follow the progression by default, and one's own self, the spectator self and the fictional character self. 
uh, also the fact that the spectator is a participant corresponding to a living reality, not the living reality, while the character belongs to a more virtual reality, an alter. Uh, hence, one must even subconsciously put oneself as an alter, an other, and create another space of Aidagara between uh, in this in-between space of interpretation of what I know from my experience and what this character is experiencing and I'm feeling about this character, this kind of Aidagara link, relationship. <coughs> Identifying will never equate to be, but it put in a briefly in a briefer piece of sentence. Uh, it's in this in between space that interpretation, uh, interpretation, uh, learning, and imagination grow and flourish. Animations such as Kino no Tabi might then serve as a multi tool between entertainment, educational, physical, and uh, philosophical growth and the interpretation amongst others. Uh, which can s this animation, this kind of animation can subvert social ethics as a testament of philos philosophical probabilities. Uh, if not identifying, the spectators will, will always tend to judge uh, the action of the main character, in this case Kino, and by judging the, 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 the action of the character, they will imply themselves into the fictional existence. Uh, let us not forget that Watsuji's whole principle of Aida Gara is anchored in a, spa a spatio-temporal uh, point of existence. I will not use the term basho as there are many more discussions about this, the use of this word. So this point of existence between one human being to another hum human being or another concept. Uh, and Kino's story's fo uh, focus is constructed about, uh, around the main characters a spatial displacement between practical places. I mean by which she travels through countries, so it's a spatial displacement. <clears throat> this displacement is to thrive, for, for her to thrive uh, by the perpetual discovery of new connections. She creates new Aidagara links, uh, relationships by traveling and discovering new knowledge and, cultural and uh, culturally ethical beings. <clears throat> Uh, it is interesting to note that the animation treats each country as its own separate social ethical world, while separating them systematically by great landscapes of green, while each country is surrounded by some kind of big wall, not unlike the mid Middle Age forts. This image is very important to remember. Uh, these barriers and natural expenses can be understood as a representation of the Aidagara space, uh, in, in what Watsuji is understand it. <clears throat> Kino, as a traveler, crosses these distances with the sole aim to gain knowledge, said it earlier, and knowledge of the otherness surrounding her. She crosses these metaphorical spatio-temporal uh, Aidagara expenses to be allowed inside the walls of a specific country and finally understand its peculiarities. Is it not how interdependent relationships are supposed to work? We cross boundaries and we are allowed to different levels of comfort in order to ent understand the other, our alter, a psyche and establish a pathway built from reciprocity, later named relationship. Let us get m even more into details of what Suji is Aida Gala and how else its philosophical concept is represented uh, by this animation. I will take the example of the very first episode story uh, which is about a country where people have isolated themselves from each other. Quickly summarize it, but thanks to scientific advancement, it's a science fiction kind of pitch, uh, thanks to scientific advancement, the country's inhabitants were able to read the thoughts of other people and their own thoughts were able to be read by other people. Thus, it was at first in order to understand, uh, understand and experience the pain of others and avoid further strife and to gain knowledge one would not have by itself. We can philosophically, <laughs> we can philosophically relate to such a, uh, such a situation uh, as an empathetic am uh, amplification and even the destruction of Aida Gala. Indeed, if no barrier uh, in the mind consciousness of the in individual knowledge 
if no barrier was to separate each being, uh, then even the concept of Aidagara, the need of recognition of the space between oneself and another self, this Aidagara would not exist. The consequence of which is the fall of the very same uh, community of Sonsai uh, by the isolation of each individual. If one individual is isolated, then it's not a community at all. <coughs> the co um, let's just say that one's pain in one's mind is enough and sharing and knowing is not on the same scale on an empathetic cognition. What Watsuji argues is the base of the ethic of human. In this animation, it is a barrier torn, torn down only to understand it is more a protection than a boundary to cross irresponsibly. Uh, already in the, first episode, um, in the first episode, the writers and animators literally and figuratively cross the boundaries uh, from the Japanese philosophical discipline to its corresponding animated expression. In a more politically inclined study, uh, the philosophical potential of this animated series is particularly interesting. Indeed, one can argue the, uh, how to say, the consideration of humanity and its otherness will always find an echo in the field of political thought, as it's always a challenge. Uh, it always, how to say, it, it always challenges the capability and willingness from human beings to coexist as individuals into a whole. Uh, a whore, so. uh, Kino, for example, the, the main character, strives, um, <coughs> she strives to present herself as an intermediate alter, uh, as to prevent a country oneself into divergence. Uh, let me explain it in more details. Uh, we, have, um, <coughs> we have on one part the country, uh, which is a Shakai Sonsai, a, communi a community of Sonsai, a collective existence. And on the other hand, we have Kino, uh, Jibun Sonsai, a self that only exists for, it, for itself, on its own satisfaction and by its own rules. Uh, in the earlier summary, I said that the main character only stays three days in each country, nevertheless, never more. She imposes this rule to herself to protect the permanence of her travels and to protect the community she is going to. Staying only three days and never getting involved as an active participant into the functions of each country is a way to keep hold of a traveler identity. For Watsuji, the belonging in a particular society, a community, it's part of what makes a human being a social ethical one, uh, thus validating its own existence. Kino's self-imposed rule creates a certain detachment related, we could relate to a more individualistic existence. Uh, as a traveler, it could be, uh, it means she couldn't adhere to Watsuji's comprehension of an ethical social human existence, one that is not wholly validated by the communities, uh, the living into a community. Uh, she believes, so Kino believes, on the contrary, that she thrives on validating her own existence as a traveler by not getting actively involved and in validating herself as a whole human being by herself not by the interaction with other or by community. Hence, creating an ethics paradox. She, as an indiv individual, uh, validates her existence by belonging to a self-only community, by expressing an, an, uh, her existence as an alter, an otherness to the countries. While on another hand, her existence as a traveler self validates the communities by acknowledging their ex existence as an other, an alter, to Kino's self. Uh, uh, these countries can grow and validate themselves further by having the existence of Kino as an altar. We could argue that the communities by themselves, because these communities have each individuals living in them, so they can validate each of them as a community. But Kinos would be represented, um, they are, say, some kind of especially alter, an especially <laughs> authority, authority to this community because she does not belong to the same, uh, to the same rules, to the same culture. She, she did not belong to the uh, Shakai Sonsai of this community. So she is a supra self. <coughs> this reciprocal, although ironic, relationship is a pathway taking place in this Aidagala space for both the community and the outer individual self of Kino. They realize themselves as as ethical holes. When Watsuji expressed that, I quote, 
uh, ethics is not a matter of individual consciousness alone. The locus of ethical problems lies not in the consciousness of the isolated individual, but precisely in the in-betweenness of person and person. It does not negate the validating existence that is the self. Uh, in this animati animation study, Kino, independently from conscious effort, serves as a reminder that the individual self has a role to play in the reali realization of community. It is comprehensible why she would insist on her being a traveler other than just a human being or community, part, commu community person. Uh, the question now is, you're going to guess it, how shall this kind of anal analysis help me in a politically inclined research? From this, from this reasoning, it is acceptable to express the ethical self as a subjective process in comparison to becoming a self-conscious and ab uh, abiding to social ethics. By becoming a subjective alter, Kino stores up philosophical experiences, um, to and because of that, she gradually becomes a conscious ethical self, all while retaining responsibility. This last notion is uh, what will be important as of now for the, the little part I'm going to do. We have Kino, so as an individual self, forging mutual interest uh, links with diverse, di diverse communities uh, of Sonsai. But we need to keep in mind these communities are ruled by an actual uh, or past authoritative powers. Uh, I said past because depending on, depending on the episode, some of the communities have fallen and degraded themselves because of the absence of political or authoritative power. Uh, thus, it sets, in, it sets in stone the fact that political entities uh, are, I'd say, are never separated from the concept of community. And the contrary is false. Communities, according to the animation, communities can't seem to survive without authority. Uh, as for visual representations of philosophy, much of it, um, I'm going to do another part because I think I'm losing a little time. Uh, so as for visual representation, concrete visual represent representation of philosophy, much of it is in the depiction of characters and dialogues. Uh, I expressed earlier that the landscapes uh, take an important part of, cre of creating a metaphorical <coughs> awareness of the Aidagala sp uh, spatio-temporal existence, uh, as it is an element used in connecting Kino and her destinations uh, as places distant both in time and space. But another important graphical component in the Aidagala's animated representation is how each, character, uh, each character's in interaction is visualized by the spectator. Animation has the possibility to be unhinged from reality as long as the imagina imaginative creator can fuel the imagery. I imagery. It is also paradoxically an art that is chained to a branch of mm, some kind of minimalism, thanks to the capacity of human conscious to create leaps between the imagined, the seen and the known, and sometimes for budget reasons. For example, even if the characters lack mm, particular facial expressivity due to a peculiar character design, the spectator will subjectively apply a valid conclusion as to the meaning of what face they are making. Uh, it also means that the apparent graphic determinism given by, the illustri by illustrators and <coughs> animators can be subverted by the spectator's interpretation, thus creating an artistic duality. Japanese animation does have codes, but not all of them are as set in stone as we would like to think. Uh, coming back to the graphical representation of Aida Gala, Kino's general facial inexpressiveness, uh, inexpressiveness can also be related to her own will of detachment from the altar, uh, the community, the altar of the community, by validating herself as an altar. Although we do know that. She we do know that she validates herself, <coughs> uh, she validates her existence as an ethical <coughs> being by interacting with communities representing the otherness, thus managing to gr uh, the growth of her Aidagala space. Uh, this phenomenon is particularly well painted during the many dialogue scenes. 
During vows, the characters will never be shown as an off-screen exchange. If Kino talks to a being of one specific community, they will always be on camera and body language face to each other. This fact will be put uh, into emphasis by another important component of the series, uh, the one I talked in the introduction, the talking motorcycle. Uh, <coughs> it's capable of speech, as I said, but it, is, it can also be understood as a metaphorical representation of Kino's conscience. Uh, be aware, I'm not talking here about a morally inclined conscience, but uh, more of a conscience tending to the ishiki. Uh, more of a consciousness. Uh, those dialogues, when Kino talks to this metaphorical representation of, of her conscience, uh, when those dialogues occur, uh, the, normally the, the virtual camera, as it is animation, will only face one of the other uh, characters. And in the rare occasions, they are both in the screen and, not, and one is not off screen, their body language are separated because by talking to something that is a conscience, that is not a living ethical being, Kino does not grow as an ethical self. Uh, her Aidagala space links are not, uh, do not thrive from this conversation as it would thrive with a being of another country, another community. Mm, which is what I think this kind of camera, cam camera, camera job uh, this is what really sets apart different dialogues and how Kino validates herself as being or as just talking to herself, basically. Uh, this is what, we can, what I would call the depiction of private public spaces, once a, which once again adds the spectator in grasping the importance of self-realization by the other. In a politically inclined philosophy, uh, this awareness of the unconscious interdependency with one or multiple alters must remind us of the position of a political entity existing as an otherness in order to access an ontological supervenient uh, value. The, 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 the authority, authoritative power needs to be in a supervenient uh, place to allow it to use this authoritative power onto other beings belonging to a public sphere of influence. Uh, while, remain, while also this authoritative power will have to remain as an entity uh, that needs to be deeply and pathetically uh, attached to each individual forming its community. Simply said, if the, author, the authoritative power needs to set itself on an ontological um, more valuable set than the, the popular uh, expression of community, but at the same time it cannot be a healthy, comprehensive authoritative power if uh, this supervenient ontological entity is not attached empathetically to the community, or there will be no community anymore. Uh, how long do I have still? You have 15 minutes. Okay, I will go to the conclusion then. Uh, yes, but, well, there are more things I would love to say, but <laughs> yes, time is of the essence. <coughs> As part of my study of Japanese animation, one important fact to note is the ability to create atmosphere thanks to the synchronization of video and audio used to complement an original text in ways research scripts and journals may not be able to convey. This is the principle of uh, entertainment, philosophy, leisure, thinking. It adds to the attractiveness to a larger public. Uh, according to anime, um, from, uh, an anime theorist from Quebec, uh, Thomas Lama, uh, he, says, he said nowadays that nowadays animation can be linked to Timothy uh, Morton's a theory of hyper-object, which means a massively produced, massively uh, c consumed object. This is the kind of thing that may, right now might be really pertinent as an educational way of philosophical, philosophical representation. But let's, uh, let us not forget that the medium of Japanese animation was first of all born from a need of entertainment and preferably a merchandisable one. So I will say that not all animated series have po philosophical potential 
it will depend on studies and how the spectator receives gain, what the spectator gains from these uh, animated uh, animated products. Uh, as a, I'll conclude, as a concluding thought, I would like to open a discourse on the wholeness of animated medium by branching the study on the subject of musical accompaniment. I said at the beginning of the presentation I would not go into much detail on the soundtrack, mostly because it's a field I'm not very knowledgeable enough in, but I feel it is necessary to at least mention the importance of philosophical study of music and therefore induced emotions. Reprocity or not, emotions are, I feel, also an important part of the study of the concept of what is Aida Galab, a creation of paths between human beings or concept. Uh, as for the conclusion, Japanese animation can be seen as an entertainment medium full of potential as an active or passive philosophical educational material. Uh, but this educational side is still on debate. I hope I was able to convey through this short analysis the potential of Japanese animation as an expressive medium of philosophy, both as a material and as metaphorical imagery. And I hope you were able to enjoy my presentation. I realize it was more theoretical analysis than a cinematographic one, but I will be awaiting any questions or more information to further my research. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation. We have about 10, 11 minutes for questions. Very interesting paper, and I'm quite sympathetic with you. I just wonder how you're going to get around the types of the worry that a lot of academics will have that in uh, presenting philosophy through animation, it just becomes a time consumable end. Because as you say, it's kind of medium of entertainment. It's no one's going to be a worry that while it's just there to entertain, people won't really pay attention to the philosophy. Also, I'd like to consider, in what way would you say animation itself could actually be considered richer, or in a way, more insightful or more profound than reading a philosophy book? Would you say there are any ways, in a sense, it could actually be, have a kind of greater insight that one could have just get from sitting in the library for several hours and reading if we're suited to do, to do a, how would you say, that in a way, it could be more than, more than philosophy? So, thank you for your question, and for your thanks. Uh, so, if I understood correctly, you're asking, how would I say that animation uh, can be a philosophical medium and how can it gain interest in the study? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry I'm no, 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 it's me, it's me. What I mean is, how can it a, just avoid just becoming a kind of consumer entertainment? Or at least, I'm just wondering how we can avoid cross oh. kind of academic. I don't necessarily agree with this position, I'm just okay. a kind of academic soup in my head saying, okay. how can it just not become a kind of consumer medium that's just there for entertainment? How can, how can we, how can we get it? How can we convey more than just an entertainment through this media? Okay, I, I got it this time. Uh, so, that's the trap, basically, because when I study animation and its philosophical representation, how its metaphorical representation can be expressed in philosophy, I always have to contend with uh, am I watching and studying something that's just entertainment, basic entertainment? Mainly how you could separate what's an economical product and something we could say an artful, philosophical potential product is basically it's a subjective choice. Uh, well, I would say it's only my own intention, uh, but uh, there are codes, of course. If, for example, you have uh, Japanese animation that comes from a video game and this video game was just particularly not very pertinent to the philosophical quest, you can say that normally this animated product will not have any consequence to the study of philosophy. Uh, but if you watch an animation that's, that you see that have, has codes that you can at least deduce and makes you think that you feel that you gained something as as a human being, as, as a philos philosophy student or person interested in philosophy, then you, you then might have to ask yourself, is there more to this animation? I think it's this question of, is there more? Because 
something happened when I gained something as a philosophical self, a being, and I think that's the question we should ask ourselves when we watch, uh, well, I say Japanese animation, but it can be for cinema, for radio, um, radiophonic program. If you gain something, then you should ask yourself, is there more? And if there's more, then you can use philosophy, uh, I think, uh, at least cultural philosophy, to, 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 to validate the, the, the medium. That's my own thought. <laughs> to pick up on this, uh, I wanted to ask if you know Professor Morioka from uh, Waseda University. Uh, no, I heard of him, but I never met him. published um, manga, mm -hmm. um, philosophy through manga. He actually published a book. Maybe you should uh, uh, yes, talk to him. Yes, I I think we have another question. Yeah, um, I've just finished watching the television series uh, Journey to the East. It was a Japanese mm -hmm. television series with real actors, and it reminded me of it. So I had, uh, um, has the author said something that he was influenced by it? Or, uh, yes, no. there is uh, a lot of play. F thank you for the remark. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I, I do recommend Journey of the East uh, to the East to everyone who would be interested. And talking about inspirations, the uh, author, the uh, original novelist uh, of Kino no Tabi, uh, said he was uh, influenced by uh, an old animation called. Uh, Galaxy Express 999, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically the same thing, uh, well, uh, ba basically a galactic train tra uh, traveling through space and visiting uh, uh, worlds, different worlds, and posing each time a philosophical quandary. And this animation was also inspired by uh, Le Petit Prince, uh, uh, Saint Exupéry's uh, Little Prince, if I have the English title correct. And and people, well, in the same interview when he said that he had no, uh, no inclination to philosophical interest for his animation, he said, oh, people told me that um, my, my, this animation, Kino no Tabi, my product, looked like uh, The Little Prince from saint exupéry but he was not aware of the book at the time. So yes, we do have this kind of trans Transtextual, transtextual uh, relationship between uh, traveling, uh, the, the travel, and how to connect to others. Uh, I think. I'm sorry, I went a little too far. Uh, okay. uh, speaking of how to connect to others, thank you very much for your presentation. I just wonder, the recently, uh, very, not recently, very popular Kino Nawa. Mm. Have you watched it? I've not watched it. Okay. <laughs> Sadly, I you didn't. Have. But I know, I know it. I know okay. everything about there it. Is a, there is a concept called musubi, which is a, a central theme of the film, the anime itself. I wonder if there's a connection between that and the created Aitakara of um, Kino no mm. uh, I thank you very much for this information and yeah. question. Mm -hmm. I will not be able to answer you uh, no. so, something really set in stone, but I think, yes, the, the, the concept of musubi, of linking uh, beings uh, with each other by circumstances or actions, is pretty close to what, what we consider the Aidagala course of action. Uh, also, Kimi no Nawa was, uh, how to say it, an animated product that was created in order to link what we could call reality viewing and how, uh, because the, animated, the, the animation, the pictures were so close to what we can see in real life. In real life, in real life it's also a way to, to transcend the reality into fictional. And yes, I, I need to look more into this must be concept. <laughs> I wonder if we can compare the story to the so-called Bildungsroman or um, coming-of-age stories from the West, because or if there's a difference, because there um, the focus is on the individual who changes and becomes more mature and more grown up through the journeys and the problems the, the protagonist faces, 
And I wonder if there's such a progress concerning Kino as well, or if she's more like a kind of medium, so that we as uh, readers, or uh, we watch it, that we uh, have progress, <laughs> but she's more like a medium, or is there also a progress concerning the... Uh, yes, I did not talk about the name because it's a whole of a chapter to, mm -hmm. to, to turn about. But indeed, uh, Kino is not a birth name. It's a name she borrowed from an adult she met in her, her own country when she had to uh, flee from, from this country because she was uh, threatened by the people living there. And this adult she borrowed this name with was a traveler and she had said, uh, implicate herself. If she replicate, replicates what this adult, this, I won't say master of philosophy because he, they didn't have enough interactions for him to be called a master, but uh, she identifies herself now as him, a traveler. And as part of the growth uh, thing, uh, yes, Kino is more of a medium uh, mm -hmm. for us to grow with. Uh, she herself stays I won't say child, but some kind of early adolescent uh, person. So yes, she is in the transition uh, in her country. She was supposed to become an adult, and that's how she wa was threatened. Uh, but uh, she is herself in a physical transition. But mentally, she will stay by her rules. She will try not to grow out of them because she is conscious. She is responsible of the danger that it poses for her and the community she is visiting. But that does not mean she <coughs> doesn't have a philosophical growth because she, well, I said she gains the experiences and we as spectators uh, gain the experiences and try or not to replicate it in our own way of life. That depends on the person. But I won't say Kino is, uh, for Kino these travels are physical growth, but it's definitely a psychological, um, philosoph more philosophical growth. Mm -hmm. yes. I think we have time for one more short, short question. Really short, short question. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, I have to say once again, I'm not so familiar with the other topic, but um, I uh, thought about uh, Kino and uh, the bike. Um, oh, yes. So, um, uh, Nils Holgersson's Wunderbare Reise in um Sverige, Nils Holgersson's uh, Travel through Sweden by Selma Lagerlöf from 1906 uh, or so, I don't know exactly what, was brought into the Japanese anime in 1980. So there's the idea of Nils Holgersson um, uh, uh, flying with these uh, uh, goose around Sweden, traveling and talking to them. And this idea of this uh, uh, traveling uh, with uh, usually non-speaking um, uh, kind of vehicles, so, so to say. Um, I'm always interested in uh, uh, not the east-west um, diversion, but in, in uh, connecting and influences. Uh, is there a, um, uh, in the 80s is a long time ago, so is there any kind of uh, influences uh, how, to, how to deal with this idea uh, that uh, animals or trains or motorcycles can talk and uh, be more than a vehicle but uh, a partner in this, according to, to what you uh, said on your uh, theory of, of this acting uh, together in this uh, to mm, I see, I see. So uh, complicated question, not so short, sorry. But very short. I, I will try to <laughs> short answer. So, uh, just short answer. Uh, the bike, I well, uh, there's no influence uh, from uh, the Keiichi uh, ab about the bike uh, from other co conceptual fiction, but it's because he just particularly bought cycles, but the speaking part is never really expressed as a fantastical or problematic thing. It's just introduced, uh, we hear the bike talk and we have to accept it, it's part of the world. And this, this partnership in traveling uh, is more for Kino not to feel lonely and because she needs a mean of transport uh, and for us as uh, spectators to fill up some blanks. Uh, but this, this traveling, because this bike has no real moral consciousness, it's n it, we gain nothing in a philosophical way from it. But we do gain the, the partnership of Kino depending on at least a tool to travel. 
I hope I did. I didn't. So I'm sorry. I cut okay. it short. Thank you very much. Thank, um, you. thank you again.